What is going on, everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone, and this is your weekly gear news update where we talk all about the new guitar gear that has come out over the last week or so. And uh, we got some pretty interesting stuff. Do me a favor if you like guitar stuff at all, just hit the subscribe button and the like button because that's what we do. And uh, yeah, we'll have links to as much of this stuff as we can find in the description below. If you use those links, it helps out the channel. Okay, housekeeping done. Time for some news. Electroharmonics has come out with the slapback echo delay in a smaller little package. You can see it here. It's got three knobs. It's got a gain, a blend, and then it's got a switch. So the gain knob is pretty interesting because you can affect the input signal up to 20 dB uh, no matter how much delay you have blended in there. So kind of like the old school uh, delay units that we used to see. And then the blend, of course, is the where you can add the delay into your signal from clean all the way to super duper wet. And then the switch goes from 45 milliseconds, 65 milliseconds, and 100 uh, milliseconds of delay. So basically this is a slap back unit and it gives you those three different stages of said slap back. It's a pretty cool pedal and it's small, so it'll fit just about anywhere. Well, most people don't want to go delay before reverb. We went delay before reverb today because we have a Strymon Cloudburst ambient reverb that has just come out. And it's also actually in a smaller package than Strymon is usually known for. And it's actually cheaper, somewhere in the 279 range, something like that. Uh, but this thing basically, uh, they call it, what is this thing? Their ensemble setting. And basically what this is, is it kind of takes their shimmer that Strymon is so well known for. Kind of takes it to the next level, makes everything adjustable. You can see all the knobs on it. It does normal reverby stuff, but really focusing around this ensemble effect for 279 bucks. Back in 2021, Corey Wong and Fender came out with his uh, signature Stratocaster. Remember, it's like a little tiny bit smaller. And of course he has a very unique sound in how he uses pickups. It has Seymour Duncan pickups, uh, Corey Wong pickups in it, but uh, they were never really available as a complete set. So now you can get them. The neck and the middle are basic Strat pickups, Alnico 4 magnets, uh, and then the bridge pickup is a stacked hum canceling thing with Alnico 5s. And so this is the Corey Wong uh, setup in a box, and these things are somewhere around 300 and twenty dollars. You can get the singles, uh, the the neck in the middle, the regular single coils, uh, for ninety nine a piece, and you can get the stacked bridge Alnico five for one nineteen. Either way, you kind of got a way you can put this together so you can have that funky sound in your Stratocaster. Keb Mo has teamed up with Gibson for a new J45. They're calling it his 3.0 because this is the third signature model that he has had with Gibson. Uh, specific to this one is LR Bags Electronics and 12 frets ahead of the body. So, uh, you have more to play with. It's a 19 fret overall, uh, 12 inch radius fretboard. And other than that, it just kind of looks like a J45. It does have uh, Keb Moe's signature neck profile on the guitar as well. And it's in that beautiful J45 sunburst color that we, that we all know. Yamaha, if you are not aware, is huge. Like, absolutely huge. Massive. And they are, they've got a bunch of stuff. Of course, they've got all kinds of things outside of guitars. And then, of course, they have the guitar division as well. Uh, Ampeg, Line 6, who else we got here? And Yamaha, of course, electric and acoustic, electric and acoustic guitars. They have just uh, bought Cordoba, Guild, Humicase, and DeArmond pickups. So this is all under the same umbrella now, making Yamaha even huger. So, I don't know what that means for the future, but probably good things because Yamaha seems to be doing just fine. The opposite of doing just fine, Chapman Guitars posted on their social media the other day uh, that they are running into problems with their UK-built 
version of their guitars. So I'm pretty sure uh, Chapman is made in Korea, most of them. And I think this is not the first time that they have attempted to make UK-based, uh, kind of more artisan, custom shop quality guitars. Well, they just announced on their social media that the folks that they chose to do this work can't keep up or don't have the facilities uh, to do so. And so they are uh, giving customers the option to refund their orders or work something else out so they can maybe get a guitar at some point. So like I said, this is not the first time this has happened. So I'm kind of curious what that means. But uh, if you are waiting on one of these guitars, you might ought to send them an email or something and figure out what you're going to do. Ovation, uh, you know, the brand that was kind of the first ones, I feel like, a long time ago to go into like the composite side of things with that round back that, you know, when you play it, it kind of like slides down your lap a little bit. Well, they have, through their applause line, come out with their jump, hmm, interesting name, line of guitars. And these things are going to be like 300 bucks. Uh, they got pinless bridges. They come in a bunch of sweet tart colors that you can see here. Uh, and they are, some of them have pickups in them, super affordable, not round. They've got uh, Ovengall back and sides, solid spruce tops, uh, maple necks, I think. And these things are, they seem pretty interesting for the price point, especially, especially for an entry level guitar player um, who might like a nice color, who might want to pick up, but doesn't want to spend a lot of money. And speaking of the ones that slide off your lap, Ovation has also come out with a kind of a reimagining and relaunch of the Ultra range. So these are the Ovations that you are kind of used to seeing. Uh, they've got lacquer finished spruce tops that are aged artificially, sort of like how Taylor and Martin do does it. And they've got completely revamped electronics, you know, obviously. We're in 2023 now. That stuff has gotten a lot better. So more output volume. Uh, the piezo pickup is reworked to work better. The positioning of all the electronics and the way it works in the top is all better. So supposedly they're going to have a lot more output and a lot better uh, sound than the ones of yesterday. So pretty cool. They got a bunch of different crazy colors that these things come in. And these aren't going to be expensive either. Somewhere around 8 50 to $900 for these things once they hit the street. Bunch of interesting cross mix of news today. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like this stuff. If you wanna watch these videos without ads, we added a uh, level of Patreon where you can go over to patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone and you can sign up over there and you can watch all of our content ad free. Sometimes it comes out a little bit after the YouTube one does, but if you hate ads, that's another way around it. Also, we have some other content coming out on Thursday, and we have a very special thing coming out on Monday. We're gonna do a live stream. Uh, it is sponsored by Stumac, and it's not gonna be a short live stream. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say before Monday, but just know that we're gonna do something very cool uh, with Stumac's help on Monday. Sometime midday, morning midday, and it's going to be pretty cool. So just stay tuned for that. Have an iPad on your desk that your boss can't see or something so you can kind of follow along with what we are about to do, but I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you tomorrow for our Q&A.